I have long been a major detractor uh, against Justice Clarence Thomas, and I've done numerous videos uh, regarding him, and I've gotten a lot of white people who want to jump to his defense and uh, attack me. Um, I, I take a criticism of my point of view, except that I don't have a problem. When it comes to uh, the derogatory personal comments, uh, those I don't accept. And I basically just block and delete. I don't even uh, reply to the comment. But uh, I, I say that because uh, in this particular uh, video, uh, you are going to see a prime example of what I'm talking about as far as Justice Thomas having issues and his issues have to do with race. And you would think being a black man growing up in America, in Georgia, that he would have a more, let's say, open view on what's going on, yet every time a race is an issue in any proceeding uh, that comes before the Supreme Court that he's involved in, he takes an absolute blind eye to racism in America. Now, this particular story, when I saw this one, I knew I was making a video on it because this has to do with a man's life. And I had seen some details uh, regarding um, this particular case uh, about, I'd say, six, eight months ago uh, that it was coming up before the Supreme Court. And the well, I'll let you decide for yourself. Um, they're going to give you uh, some of the information. If you do your own research, there's a lot more um, involved in uh, the uh, DA uh, basically uh, using uh, racism in order to not so much get, not even uh, to get the man convicted because he admitted to the crime, but basically the penalty phase and um, how they used racism in order to get the penalty that they were looking for. Here we go. Supreme Court throws out the death sentence of a black man in Georgia. Yesterday they voted seven to one to overrule the death sentence handed down by an all white jury. The court determined that black jurors were incorrectly removed from the jury pool. In fact, prosecutors in Georgia literally had a list that notated a B next to those individuals who were African-American to note, to, to denote black. Now, in 1987, uh, an elderly white woman was killed uh, by uh, the young man, Timothy Tyrone Foster. He did confess to the particular killing, but the Supreme Court ruled the sentencing was not fair because, again, an all-white jury now, what's crazy about this is that the court ruled seven to one. Remember, there are eight Supreme Court justices. The one was Clarence Thomas, a black man from Georgia. Monday's ruling will not vacate Foster's conviction. However, it does open the door for Foster to go back to the Georgia State Court and argue for a new trial 29 years after his conviction. I want to break this down uh, with our panel, Norma Leon, a Sirius XM radio show host, political scientist, Drew Elons, National Director for Advocacy and Public Policy, Mocha Moms. We also, of course, Daniel Blevins, a Supreme Court reporter and lawyer, General Caldwell, Republican strategist, Caldwell Strategic Consulting. Danielle, I want to start with you. You come to the Supreme Court. When I saw this ruling, and I saw it was 7-1, I was not shocked at the one was Justice Clarence Thomas. So, uh, and I went through his opinion, uh, and he really said the court took the wrong action, should not have been involved, uh, and made several other comments, explained as the one covering the court why Thomas was the one out of the, out of the eight just, ju justices to, go, to say he shouldn't have his conviction thrown out. Justice Thomas is a very principled man. And so when it comes to the delineation between state and federal courts, what the state should have to do, what the federal courts should make the states do, 
He is very conservative in that sense that there should be the federal there should be very little federal intervention. And so if you look at all of his dissents across whatever topic it is, he is very principled along all those lines. So he's very consistent. So you kind of, you really do know, he may not talk in court, but you know where he's going to line up. So I think that this is pretty consistent with his character. He doesn't take race into a factor. He doesn't necessarily, be, you know, take it down the, the rabbit trail of bats and challenges and where race could be involved. He becomes a very race neutral justice and you know, and it comes into contact when race is the focal issue of a case. Wilmer, what was interesting about this is that Thomas wrote in his opinion that prosecutors reasonably struck one juror because she would sympathize with Foster because of her work low income and disadvantaged kids. He also said it was fair because she was related to someone with a drug or alcohol problem. He also said that it was fair to strike a woman who worked at a hospital, but an African American woman who worked at a hospital, but they didn't strike an African Amer a, a, a white guy who worked at the same hospital. I think Justice Thomas is a man with some serious personal internal conflict and unfortunately and, and it centers around race and I believe that he has allowed his own personal internal conflicts to color his perceptions of reality because at the end of the day we have a Supreme Court for one reason and we have a Supreme Court because they are supposed to be the ultimate arbiters of justice and when you read his opinion there is nothing about justice in that opinion it's all about states rights mm -hmm. and uh, in this instance when prosecutors intentionally strike people from a jury simply based upon the color of their skin, not only is it wrong, not only is it immoral, it's illegal. Drew, Drew was interesting because when you read the, the opinion, Justice Roberts wrote, mm -hmm. uh, Samuel Lito concurred. I mean, they really were very specific in saying that this was a clear, direct plan by the prosecutors to remove mm -hmm. black jurors from this jury. Right. If the two main white guys on the Supreme Court clearly state that this was an attempt which succeeded in striking jurors because they were black and that being the only reason that they wanted them struck what the hell is Clarence Thomas looking at? And, you know, I find it interesting, um, as Danielle said, that um, Justice Thomas becomes principled when it's always about race. Any other time, if it's a woman's right to choose or something around there, he's not so principled about states' rights, etc. But he's very principled when it comes to race. And one of the things that I actually noticed is how he continued to put up what happened um, and what the young man actually, um, what he actually confessed to. However, what he did not take a note to, and he, he wanted to uphold what the prosecutors did, but they were derelict in their duty. They were derelict. When, if, if something happens to someone in my family, what I want the prosecutor to do is try this um, person and put forth every effort so that something like this wouldn't happen, where it wouldn't be an overturn. And they're the ones who were derelict. They're the ones who actually had that written out, and now they are now they suffer the consequences of their actions. You know, Thomas the court spilling, uh, he seen few circumstances uh, where the court spilling so much ink over a fact bound claim arising from his state post conviction. This is a person's life. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And to be that dismissive, mm -hmm. that to me is problematic. Yeah. You know, I, I gotta, I've been listening to everyone's commentary. I have to fully agree with what Danielle said earlier. He is principled, he's, he's been fairly consistent. But this is death. But let me, let me finish. I disagree with his opinion here. Here's why. Our systems of government throughout this country, there's institutional racism, especially in the criminal justice system. And if there be a time for the federal government to take a step in via the Supreme Court, it's now. 
And we've seen this time and time again through many juries, whereas there have been opportunities by the prosecution to prevent African Americans from being on the jury because they believe someone would either sympathize or they can see themselves in that situation. They try to strike them, therefore allowing for a, a greater consideration for a convention, conviction. And I think in this situation, the other jurists got it right. I don't know what he was thinking about in this situation. And then, <laughs> Just and, and, and then you know, what this really jumps out for us is that when you have prosecutors, and we saw this with a judge in Kentucky, mm -hmm. said, wait a minute. Judge Elo. I'm watching prosecutors. And you are systematically removing black jurors. Mm -hmm. Now the whole fight there. This is real. Yes. And then for Thomas, I mean to say, well, hey, with the federal, we should intervene. That's precisely why. That's what because you're... this is death. Yeah. This is literally death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is with Thomas, he, he was more concerned with the fact that this case was from 1987, and they didn't find these notes till 2010, 2011, 20, almost 20 years later. And, and then he says, well, now this, well, this court is saying that any EMA is going to start rummaging right. through prosecutors' paper. Thank God they yes, should. Exactly. was found. As they should. Exactly. As they right. should. Because what we know is our prisons and jails are housing too many innocent people yeah. because of practices like this. Yeah. We, we, we hear time and time again, uh, thank God for DNA testing. Yeah. Because now, innocent people, yeah. after having languished in prison for 20 and 30 years for rapes they did not commit. Yeah. Yeah, but I think what's the important thing is we can now go back, and I think we have to go back and change our systems and our structures. That's the problem. It's not necessarily an individual here or, or person there. We've got to go back and use these techniques to change our systems and our structures, not just to benefit one person, right. but to make it e equal right. for all of us. I was just going to say the other thing that, you know, while Justice, is, is, uh, Justice Thomas is talking about all of this, uh, and not really understanding that ultimately it did do something for this one person but the core of what has happened which is something that Justice um, Thurgood Marshall was really trying to get done is the preparatory um, strikes like it does not keep that from happening and what happens is everybody needs to be held accountable like you right. said the judge in Kentucky is looking and noticing something is not right and if that judge who wasn't aware of the notes but if that judge in Georgia had been that way and had noticed that then then too we might not be in this situation here well, well, again, to me, one of the problems with our system is to say that even if you find new evidence, well, there were no errors in the trial, so therefore the conviction, the conviction should be held. I'm sorry. If you have new evidence, yes. I'm a firm believer that if it holds up, then you should be able to get a hearing. Uh, and so I'm glad to see. What about the prosecutors? I'm, Exactly. Well, who lied under oath should be prosecut prosecutorial misconduct and exactly. should be disbarred. But again, I'm glad to see we have seven justices who saw this the correct way. Unfortunately, the only African American it was brutal. clueless on this one here. And he could have just been dissenting just for the sake of dissenting. Let's just throw that out. And, and right. hope, let's hope. And, and well, anyway, let's hope. Yeah. All right, let me just stay quiet on that. Coming up. All right, so again, Clarence Thomas needs to be impeached. Okay. I know there are no grounds to impeach him, so let's let's just get past that. But if there were grounds, I would pray to God that they would impeach him. So with that being said, hopefully he will retire soon. And I know that that is a pie in the sky uh, wish. And that's the most that I'm gonna say about that. But for this man, to have, I guess, experienced the things that he did in his life and not to be able to see racism when it's slapping him directly in the face, upside the head, and got it, its foot up his behind, to me, just signals the fact that this man has some major issues and in his position, he needed to get over them a long time ago, but it doesn't look like uh, that's going to happen anytime soon.